Hi everyone, this is Freya from Otherworldly and I'm here with a new treasure chest. This is the first treasure chest of 2017 since they took a break for January and there are some new things about this treasure chest. Um, first of all it has a theme, the theme being dungeon crawl and then it is only 10 designers for a thousand lindens instead of uh, up to 15 designers for 1500 lindens or rather that was of course the sign up price until the delivery today um now it is as usual twice the price afterwards but it is a bit more of a a taster package slightly smaller than before to uh entice people to have a look at this um uh, role play oriented uh, subscription box um the only one so far in second life and um what i've done here is i've um dressed myself up as the the shaman of the party who's about to to crawl into a few dungeons and uh, this is courtesy of a gotcha from Davius Mind and um, all the pieces the the war paint and uh, the top and uh, the the chain skirt with the feathers um, I did add a little thong for the sake of modesty since this will be on on YouTube and uh, I'd rather not have it restricted there um, the um, the paint actually goes together with uh, the uh, the hammer, uh, and there is another colored paint that goes together with the uh, the morning star, and those are rares. Whereas the the skirt and the top and the feathers for the for the for the hair are uh, common pieces, uh, the common range of colors. This is uh, the sand color, so I think I'm ready to um, take on a dungeon. Um, dressed like this. I should be um, ready to handle uh, a few orcs and whatnot. For actually going through the treasure chest those uh, gigantic weapons might be a little bit of an issue and be in the way so I've ditched those and I'm going to go in and give you a look at the treasure chest HUD. I've done my own packing but I'm gonna show you what the HUD looks like. It is a wearable HUD. Um, of course it is a HUD, but rather it's a HUD and not an object that you res out. And um, you've got your 10 designers with little pictures showing uh, little previews. You can get in close and see what they are. And then you can click the individual designers to just get one piece at a time, or you click in the middle to get all the loot. And Unrepentant is um, late. They have a little gift included, but they don't have their full uh, price included yet, so um, uh, we'll have to do a post about that and update later on. So what we, but we do still have ten items then, since they did uh, include a preview, and um, I think we'll start with that one, the Rogues Preview Box. Okay, and it disappeared itself. And we have a wearable knife, and we have a wearable knife at the waist. So I'm just gonna go in and do some little fiddles here to get you to see these better. And these look like they are meant to be sort of obsidian blades, I think, with leather wrapping on the side and a nice little handheld version. And I do like that these aren't at all, you know, the huge uh, overdone knives that you sometimes get in Second Life. You do need some sort of belt to go with it, some sort of loop that it could go through, but I really like the design of these knives, I have to say. Um, of course, now I managed to stab myself. Oops. Um, that looks like it might be fatal. But that is a really nice little preview, and they've said that the actual release is going to be a lot more, so I will be very interested in seeing what the, the rest of the Rogue looks like. And um, they said it might be done today or in just a day or two. After that, we have uh, Rowan Wood, the Dungeon Entrance Ruins set. And I do love Rowan Wood's uh, props and decor. Um, they're always in a nice sort of fantasy roleplay style. And um, I have uh, had a lot of fun with them. And this one definitely looks like it could be a lot of fun as well. Let's have a look in here. We are... So this is something you could set up together with a build. 
perhaps. And it has, I think, a, a workable door or no? Um, but um, then obviously you want something behind it. Um, this is a very nice piece. I could definitely see incorporating this into a build. Um, whether you have a, a tower behind it that you can work into or something else and it has a very nice sort of dark and foreboding feel to it. This is definitely an old dungeon where you do want to have your axe and your morning star along when you're going to walk into it. Um, also included is a tree to um, have some decor. So you can add a little tree, a little autumnal leafed maple and um, set the mood for this thing that's gonna be a little overgrown out in the woods, forgotten ruins. That's a great mood piece. So, tidy up a little bit. And turn ourselves right back around for the next one. This, um, well, I'm of course bouncing up and down. So I'm prone to do after getting off something. This is um, this build, by the way, is another sky landscape from uh, Landscapes Unlimited. Um, what I've done here is actually used one of their solid mesh terrains, and then I've added a what is supposed to be a ground level sim surround, and I've actually added it to the build in the sky, um, which is um, not entirely recommended, but it actually works pretty well. And uh, I love the fact that I can have these huge vistas, um, all sorts of different ones and all sorts of different seasons and, and set up various locations for photos. Um, definitely one of the best investments I've done in, in Second Life to, to get that package when it was, um, on a deal. Um, there have been a few more added since then and uh, I'll probably have to pick up those as well. And then let's have a look at the Half Moon Market, the old school text adventure essentials. And um, that's kind of a cool one because uh, while um, I haven't really done, you know, pen and paper role playing per se, um, I do roleplay on a text-based role-playing game still, and have been doing so since 95. Um, so here we have the Brass Lantern and the Elvish Sword of Great Antiquity. I love the name there. Um, so let me see. It looks like the Brass Lantern was not meant to be attached like that, however. So we will res it out instead. And there we go. And then we'll see if the sword wants to play along. Um, I will get into a post for a moment and see. The sword does attach where it should and I'll give you a better look at it while I'm not moving around. Uh, and boy do I wish I had bent or hands. So I don't have to do, well I still have to do some adjusting but then I could do some posing of the hand instead of just moving around things like this. So we have some runes, of course, on the sword. This is an elvish sword of great antiquity and uh, it's uh, an important find in the dungeon. Um, obviously it's got some very special stats and so on. If you don't have a morning star already, then uh, clearly the elvish sword would be the perfect thing to make sure that you're safe when you're um, up against all the scary things you might find in a dungeon. Item number four that we're opening is the Adrenaline fat bag from Entice. And um, we'll see what that might be. We have a preview here, and it is an outfit. It is a mesh tank and corset with band braces, mesh spiked cuffs, and plier leggings. And now it doesn't look like we have a physique fit here. We have the hourglass fit, but I'm wearing like, physique at the moment. Um, but I will have to try Matreya for the corset and see how we get along with that. And that doesn't look too bad, actually. Let's alpha out a bit of the midsection. Not quite so much. Drop those and then a bit more there. And there we go, that's perfect. 
so um, that's not a problem obviously um, it would fit even better on the Matreya body or uh, I could use the hourglass for my hourglass body so what we have here is a hood as well and we can control the various parts of it uh, independently the tank, the corset, the corset laces, band braces and their laces um, so for example if we'd want to have a white tank instead maybe we want to have white laces or red laces for some detailing and then go red laces on the van braces as well oops I see there it's actually a little bit much that I'm taking off maybe I can manage to ditch a bit more on the alpha well I get a tiny peek through but we will just have to live with that right now just know that it would fit perfectly on Matreya and um, uh, on the other bodies that are included. Unfortunately, it's more and more common that sling physique isn't, and um, I'm uh, I'm persistent in my usage of it. Anyway, what we have more as well is cuffs. Okay, these are spiked cuffs for your shoulders. Um, they also have a hood. Um, that's just for the leather color, so I'll let those stay black. Um, and then we have a plier leggings. So these will go um, on top of things here and we'll go with the black and it applied to underpants. So I will turn on underpants and we'll turn on a bit more of the underpants. There we go. Obviously it looks a bit weird right now that I'm wearing the thong um, over it like that. Maybe I'll, I'll ditch the thong for now. And, uh, and the skirt here as well um, but I'll keep oh, and there's the extra flexies for the skirt but I will keep the um, the war paint on so there you have your little sexy leather dungeon crawl outfit from entice and after that we have the sacrificial right from Suzu Ian pack that and see what we got here. Oh, we have a sacrificial altar and um, a stage and a basin. Okay, so we'll start with the stage, I guess. Put this to the side a little bit here. I don't know how large it is. Well, larger than I had counted on. Um, get this to rest out. And then we have an altar the altar there and then we have the uh, basin which might be suitable to go there there are some included on the stage as well and there we have the rest of the stage so do you feel like getting sacrificed might happen to you if you go off into a dungeon without thinking about the consequences um, clearly they're up to no good here. Um, there are also some silk poses if you'd like to pose on the altar and just be like sexy and all. Um, or you have your sacrifice poses. Um, looks distinctly uncomfortable um, or unnerving perhaps. Um, but this is definitely a very cool set as well. Um, really nicely done. Um, I love the feel of the altar. Uh, this is something you could stick well, outside uh, or in, within a build. And um, I love the detailing here, the stone here on the altar. Um, Maybe some blood stains should be now. Maybe these are nice sacrifices, not all that bloody. Um, and then you have this little basin of water as well. This is a cool one. Very atmospheric. And this is not gonna end well. Pretty sure of that. So let me see about rescuing myself. 
promptly clearing out the altar. And back in I go to see what we have next. Anacron, torch dispensing scone. And you can look at my butt in the meantime. There are some small fit issues in the back I can see with the Maitreya on the physique body, but that is entirely to be expected. So here we have a um, basically a wall scone, I guess. Something that you can set on a wall at least. Let me see how. Yes, you set it on a wall like that, and then you click it, and you get your torch, and then a new one spawns, and there you're set. You're ready to go deeper into the dungeon. That's very cool. And I like the fact that it's using the auto attach and everything. So in terms of having this as a sort of role play item and, and uh, having this in your castle or dungeon build, um, that's really excellent. Um, I like the props that Anacron are coming up with. They are definitely very role play oriented and uh, they, um, they know their stuff. I kept a hold of the torch for now, just in case we run into any nasties in the remaining packages. Uh, mind you, the next one, the sapphire axe and headdress from Ursh, doesn't sound like it'll be hiding any monsters precisely. Um, you never know though, could be a surprise. And there we go, we have some animations and various things. And we have, there we are, we have a axe for your back, like that, and we have an axe for your hand, so I'll need to ditch the torch now, a little crowded otherwise, oops, I apparently had two torches, um, I must not ditch the mountains, that'd be a little silly. And then there's a pose. Okay, so you hold the axe out like that rather than stab yourself and it'll just override the arm. I like that one. That's done with weapons and such, so you can just hold them out like that and um, just keep from stabbing them through various parts of yourself. That looks nice and menacing as well, which will keep you safe on the dungeon crawl too. And then we have the headdress which doesn't show up an awful lot with this hair, I'm afraid. Um, this hair, by the way, is one of the group gifts from Truth VIP group. There were two of them for this month, and um, I really like the way um, the sprayed up to is done. Um, I see that there is a hair, actually. So maybe we will switch to that one and see if it shows off the, um, the headdress any better. We will oh, skip over Cubic Cherry for a moment and go to, to Adonis and try the Valyrian hair. And we will go for copper because I am wearing a red style as it is. Unfortunately, that did not improve the situation with the headdress. Um, so I am going to have to show that without a hair, I think. Uh, but here what you have is a bit of a tough chick look, I think. Um, might work for a guy as well. It looks like it would be um, editable, actually. Let me see if it is. Um, no, it is not mod. Is it resize scripted? It is resize scripted on the other hand. So yes, um, this would work for a, a male avatar as well, although I think it's something about it feels a bit feminine. And I will just ditch that as well for a moment to show you the sapphire headdress a bit more close up. So you have a nice big stone there and ah, various bits and pieces that are sticking into my nose. Um, not an uncommon problem. I have a bit of a big nose in as well. So there you go, and that kind of matches some of the detailing with the gold on the uh, 
on the axis as well. And I think I'm gonna ditch that and get myself back into, that's the wrong one. Uh, no, there's the other one, there's the other X. Not touch my head, that would be a very silly thing to do. And then I'm gonna get the um, char hair back on again. And there we go. Weapons off, and we are ready for the last two items. We have our treasure chest, we have the pixie orbs from Cubic Cherry. Pixie Orb Light, left and right, and Pixie Orb Shadow. Let's see if these come with any... They do come with poses. Um, so here we have the Light Orb. And this looks like it could be a magic spell, perhaps. Um, not necessarily sure that the orcs will be impressed if you throw flowers at them, but maybe they are exploding flowers. Um, or it's a way of lighting up your dungeon. And then we have the shadow orb as well. Which is a darker version with uh, black roses or dark uh, red roses and black orb like that. A bit more black magic perhaps. Um, these are really cutely done I have to say. Um, not strictly sure they're dungeon crawly, but um, they're definitely magical. And um, it's entirely possible you could construe them as being a spell of sorts. So um, very nicely done as well. And then we have our final item, which is the 1313 Worn Hide Mask Unisex. Okay, so we do have one item here that is stated as being unisex. Um, other than that, obviously the props are unisex. I don't know if the rogues set, once it's finished, will be unisex. The torch is unisex. Um, the axis, I think, could work as well. Um, size might be an issue. Um, and then we have, and the hair, as I said, felt a little feminine to me, but um, might work anyway. So we have a fresh hide mask and a worn hide mask. Um, fresh sounds a little um, gruesome. Okay, it's not that fresh. Um, and as usual, this is not necessarily a great fit with hairs. Um, but I'll pull it out a little bit more to show you. And this is actually not a bad fit with like a shamanistic outfit, I think. Um, and it has a texture change HUD. So you can have um, various animals um, and it's in two parts so you can mix your uh, animal skins as well, like that. Um, go for something black like that. Um, very nice detailing on the fur and on the stitching I have to say. And we will have to have a look at what the worn mask looks like as well um, pull that one out a bit well that straight out would be better than ah i see it's actually um has some bits and pieces that have uh, fallen off okay that's why there's a mirrored version this one has uh, the option that you basically have one side that shows more of your face because a piece of it has fallen off. Um, I'll show you the ad as well. Fresh mask, torn mask, mirror, torn, multiple height and leather options to choose from mix and match items. There we go. I'll do this pose and I'm going to give you a bit of a summary before I'm finished. So there we have it. This was the Dungeon Call, dungeon Crawl Treasure Chest for February and it was uh, a 10 for 10 
or 10 for um, a thousand linden sets, so there were 10 designers. Uh, we had uh, quite a nice mix, I think, of uh, wearables, um, including an outfit. Um, we had a hair, we had some accessories, and we had some very nice props. Um, Overall, I think that the designers had done a pretty good job of getting the theme of it, uh, Dungeon Crawl. Um, there were some that were a bit less Dungeon Crawly than, other, than others, of course. Um, but, you know, how do you make a hair Dungeon Crawly? Well, yes, giving it some sort of attitude as an adventurer and thing like that. Um, it can obviously fit for other things as well, but it, it's very difficult to precisely um, identify it as uh, a particular genre um, and um, I think that it was a nice idea of uh, perhaps slimming down the box a little bit for this time uh, testing out getting more people to see what it is about hopefully and uh, I do like the idea of a theme because some of these pieces will go together for sure and uh, there will of course be a post to go with this but i don't quite know when the post will be up because um we're trying to upgrade our um, web software and it's not being entirely cooperative so uh, there may be some delays on that but i will put more details on the video if it delays beyond a day certainly um so um and of course there will be then photos to go with the post as well to show uh, uh, one of the sets and give details on the things that I was, you know, wearing to start with and, and so on. So um, I'm excited to see what the next theme for the treasure chest will be. And um, don't know what I said, whether that will be a um, round with 10 designers or more. Um, I certainly think there are more designers that should be trying this out. Um, and perhaps um, generally when it comes to fantasy and roleplay where branching out a bit more there's a lot of accessories being done i mean this one wasn't bad it was nicely balanced but in general if you look at fantasy gotchas and such um there are a lot of pure accessory sets and maybe not so much clothing to wear with them so i do hope we will see a bit more clothing and uh you know i know it's easy difficult to do things both for um you know take all the time to do things for both uh, male and female avatars but i'm sure the guys out there would um, love to get a few more things as well but um that's it for me for this time until the next one